My name is Peter Kerr. I'm with the Tactical Tracking Operations School, uh, president uh, of the company for the last couple of years, uh, also a senior instructor for the company. Okay. And how do you spell your last name? Uh, Kerr, it's K-E-R-R. -R. Okay. And what's your hometown? Uh, I currently live and reside in Hawaii. Okay. Just a uh, basic start off, what is tracking? Well, tracking, the type of tracking we teach is visual tracking. You know, we're teaching young Marines and soldiers how to use their eyes and ability and visual perception to detect indicators and sign left on the ground by either enemy insurgents, aggressors, uh, enemy forces, etc. The tracking itself is same has been taught for thousands of years, passed down from generation to generation. You know, it's an ancient hunting skill of following ground sign, aerial spore, you know, ground spore, and those are basically signs and indicators. Every time the passage of a human or an animal through an area, it will leave signs. You know, we're teaching young Marines how to identify that sign, interpret it, and follow it. Um, what are some of the challenges that uh, uh, persist when someone's trying to track an enemy? Uh, the biggest one is uh, getting people used to looking at the tracks and understanding what they mean. You know, as somebody moves through an area, you know, we, we just don't think about it. As they, every time they step, they're leaving an indicator of their direction, the speed of their movement. So some of the challenges with that is just getting young Marines and soldiers to sit there and understand that, you know, hey, this means something. It's actionable intelligence. You know, as it starts to progress and we, the enemy starts to figure out that we're actually tracking them, then we can start to see the game change. You know, just as they do with everything else, they'll start to change their techniques and tactics. So some of the challenges that trackers will have to overcome as this new capability is presented you know, or put onto the battle space, into the battle space is that the enemy will start to try to anti-track, meaning disguising their tracks, reducing their signature as they emplace an IED or move to and from contact sites or ambush sites. You know, we teach techniques how to overcome them, but it does become a challenge. And it can escalate into what we call counter-tracking, where they may use uh, methods, you know, leave behind presence to harm or uh, uh, persuade the trackers to abandon the follow-up, and such as booby traps, old simple stuff that was very common in uh, Korea, World War uh, or uh, World War II, Korea, and also in Vietnam. You know, the old-style booby traps. Um, what skills uh, make a tracker successful? Uh, you know, in the, in the past, we used to be able to rely on a lot of our good old boys, guys that grew up hunting, you know, living off the land, going out constantly, you know, spending time in the environment. They had these inherited skills. You know, they knew how to track, they hunt, you know. So those were those type of skills that we're trying to bring back to the Marine Corps, you know, and teaching them this, those things, you know, how to look at the land, read the land, how to interpret the tracks, to, pr uh, to profile the terrain, you know, where would I go, what would I do? You know, and very often the enemy does the similar things. Some of the other individual characteristics is, you know, you have to be one that's curious. You always have to look at and ask questions and, you know, see, you know, or ask yourself, what is it? Why are these footprints here? What are they associated with? Where did he go? How fast was he moving? So you have to be curious. Um, you have to be patient. It takes time. If you have an individual that's moving across hard terrain, you know, um, tracking is an opportunity event. The right place, right time, right terrains. You can track somebody down very easily. Other times, it could be very difficult terrain, and you're going to have to work through it. So you have to have patience. Uh, you definitely have to be tactically aware and situationally aware. Your head should be always on a swivel, because if you think about it, we're teaching them how to close with the enemy by following their tracks, their footprints, and evidence. Uh, if they do the job successfully, they are going to make contact with that enemy. So you constantly be, have to be searching for that enemy. You know, uh, unlike a search and rescue type tracking where they're happy to see you, uh, the enemy usually isn't happy to see you walking up on his six. Right. Um, and uh, you definitely have to be a team player. Um, as we teach a t form of tracking that we utilize a complete team, and because of the danger associated with following an, an dangerous individual, an armed individual, an insurgent, you know, you got to do this as a team. Everyone has to work together, just like every other team. And it's a team effort. Um, um, some of the other things, good visual acuity, of course, because we're teaching visual sensing, so you have to be able to have, see well. You know, um, and rely on your sixth sense. You know, um, you definitely want to sit there and you know, enhance your visual acuity, your senses of uh, sight, uh, smell, hearing, all these things add to, because they all provide another form of spore. You know, I may track a distance, get close to the enemy, then I hear them or I smell a fire cooking. So it's kind of a well-rounded course. And the biggest thing I think guys are getting out of this training 
you know, as an individual on an individual level, uh, not so much the tactical or operational, as it enhances situational awareness. We like to say that once they go through this course, they'll never walk through the woods the same again because they're now seeing all these signs and indicators that have always been present. They just now understand what it is they're looking at. So what is TTOS? Uh, TTOS, um, it started off Tactical Tracking Operations School. It was founded back in 1994. Uh, a gentleman from uh, the, uh, Zimbabwe uh, came to the U.S. They used tracking quite a bit uh, during some of their conflicts uh, during their wars, uh, 70s and 80s. Started a program, um, was asked to teach a course. After that, it started to gain some traction and uh, he established the Tactical Tracking Operations School. From there, he started recruiting U.S. retired U.S. military and law enforcement personnel to help him and start to change it. There were certain things that they did in, in their area that worked as far as tactics and techniques regarding tracking, but we started to bring the U.S. history of tracking into it, you know, where we use it. Great successes in Vietnam, you know, we had a combat tracking program. Law enforcement all over the United States uses tracking on a regular basis for manhunting. So he brought a team together and from there it evolved. We started off with a very small company. 2006, 2007, we started working with the Army, established the U.S. Army Combat Tracker Program, and then also with the Marine Corps with the Combat Hunter Program. I was very honored and, and to be a part of that. I helped uh, write the POI and then came out here and helped teach for two years on Combat Hunter, the tracking portion of it. Um, and I'm very glad to see that that program is still up and running uh, to this date. Uh, uh. Where is the school at? Uh, well, we're primarily mobile training. We have a home office in Sierra Vista, Arizona, outside of Fort Huachuca. That's where we stood up the Army Combat Tracker Program. Uh, trained very similar to Afghanistan and uh, Iraq at the time. So we stood up the schoolhouse there, but mostly we go out and do mobile training. It helps reduce costs to units. All we need is a classroom to pitch a few classes and some ground to go out there and teach the young Marines and soldiers how to track. Who teaches the course? Uh, well, there's several of us. Um, we've been fortunate enough that over the years, uh, this is a skill set that you're either very passionate about or not, and usually it's the first. You know, you're very passionate about it. And over the years, we've had guys that have gone through, um, all the gentlemen that are assisting me with this course, and I have four of them out here, they're all gentlemen that have gone through the course at one time in their career, used it you know, operationally, have retired out, and have come out and want to teach. And what we're looking to do is pass this information on to the future trackers of the U.S., and that's these young Marines who we're training out here uh, today and the previous classes through the Combat Hunter, we're passing the torch. Well, we're getting a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, so all of our instructors are either uh, prior law, uh, military or law enforcement with experience in tracking, gone through the training, and have been teaching for many years. Uh, Why is it important that, that uh, TTOS is passed on to the younger Marines? It's something that there was a time where you didn't even think about it. Tracking was passed on from father to son, you know, grandfather to uh, grandson. It was a skill set. You know, early man needed two things to survive. You know, one was the ability to hunt. You know, uh, to do that, you know, it was they needed two things with uh, ability to track and a weapon system. So it was always passed on. Over the years, as we've moved through the uh, agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, and into suburbanite more, uh, style of living, kids have lost this skill set. Now, it's important that we bring them back and that they understand the ground. The enemy fights in his backyard. He uses the terrain to his advantage. He knows how to move to and from. So we, it's real important that we teach them how to read that, those indicators and signs left by that enemy activity. Now, and if it's not passed on, then it'll be a lost skill set. For a while, it was lost. The U.S. had a combat tracking program during Vietnam. After Vietnam, they cut it. And there was many years where we didn't have it. And that's why we were uh, forcing or pushing to get tracking back into uh, the capabilities of the uh, U.S. military. So. What are some of the, the, the needs of a tracker? Like, why would, you, why would you use combat tracking to begin with? Ah, there's several. Um, at one time, it was considered uh, a type of patrol. It was in uh, many military doctrines. You had a combat patrol, reconnaissance patrol, and a tracking patrol. And primarily, and you can use it for reconnaissance. You go out and check an area. Yes, I don't see troops walking to and from or moving through the area, but I can go in and recce the area and look at the ground and determine how many went through the area, direction of travel, what type of equipment they've been carrying with them or some munitions or supplies and how long ago it was. That's good actionable intelligence. I've got a picture of what was going on in this valley and I can bracket timelines. Um, contact with the enemy, the enemy breaks contact. 
we can immediately engage and pursue that enemy based off that footwear evidence. The big one, what we're teaching to the sappers and the engineers and is taking hold across the U.S. Uh, military engineer and, and EOD type elements is that every time somebody emplaces a device, they leave physical evidence at that scene. Most times they're not even conscious of it. That evidence is as they walk up to that device, dig up the ground, they change the natural state of that ground. They emplace the device, they try to brush it out and restore it back to its natural state, but it's impossible. Then they walk out. Those signs and indicators are the clues that enhance their ability to have visual detection on IEDs prior to walking into a kill zone. They can start seeing it off further, uh, at further distance, at standoff distance using optics. So it really enhances their situational awareness to recognize that there's been a change to the road, that there may be indicators that an IED has been put in place. Same with ambushes. People have to move into and from to get into an ambush position. They disturb the natural state of the ground and the vegetation, which are all indicators of a potential ambush or an attack. So it's critical for these guys. Um, right now, uh, we've been working with Jayado since 2006 on implementing tracking into and visual detection, visual sensing, if you will, on how to discover IEDs. Um, it's used by the Israelis, it's used by all the guys in Vietnam, used by the guys who work, operate it in Vietnam. Uh, many countries still rely on it as their primary form of detection for IEDs and booby traps. So it's, then all the secondary equipment is an enhancer to that. They can visually see that something doesn't look right up there. There may be indicators that something's been dug or in place on the road or alongside the road. Then they can send the, the dog up, you know, or go up with the sweeper and check it, you know, and then do a closer physical check. So it's, uh, it's a skill set that is just so valuable to them. Um, currently, they're trying to put it into, uh, the, uh, they're making a dismounted patrol a manual, and it talks about using visual detection and visual tracking to find IEDs and everything else in a second. So it's, I'm very pleased that uh, First Seb has taken initiative and uh, had us come out last year and is now having us come out and train up the rest of the guys for their uh, future missions. It's a critical skill set. It's been proven that it helps to detect and uh, reduce casualties and to successfully detect IEDs. So it's good. What kind of uh, results have there been uh, so far uh, from the TPOS training? Well, we constantly get uh, unclassed uh, feedback from uh, individuals that have successfully gone out, had contact with the enemy, picked up the tracks, identified the key prints associated with that attack, attack and are able to track them down and close with and either kill capture. In the IED uh, defeat uh, arena, uh, we constantly are getting feedback of individuals that have successfully uh, discovered IEDs and reduced their casualties. We had a, uh, uh, we were a scout unit, Army scout unit, just get back and got a call and the guy was talking about this training and, and this visual sensing, they never got to track anyone down, but they never had one IED casualty during their deployment because they're constantly using it. When they were forced to clear their routes to move to uh, an objective, they would get out and use visual sensing and some of the formations we teach. And uh, he said approximately about 115, 120 IEDs they successfully detected without detonation. Um, it was huge. He said thank you. So it's a lot of good feedback. On the uh, class side, there's a lot of reports uh, coming out. Um, it's being used uh, on a daily basis from what I understand. So. Good. More guys that uh, survive their uh, rotations and then uh, discover those IEDs, keep the routes open. Uh, that's a good day. You know, we want to see these guys go over, do good for the country, for the cause, and but successfully come home and spend time with their families and friends. We'll set up roads where we'll set up multiple devices out there, you know, 10 to 12 items, and they'll use optics at stand ass distance to sweep the roads and look for those devices. We teach them shape recognition, you know, color change, contrast in the environment so they can see it. And then we'll actually have them do some route clearance techniques that we picked up from the Israelis, from the, what the U.S. used to do uh, back in the NOM, which is old school stuff on how you can physically you know, uh, patrol a road and use your eyes to enhance your ability to detect devices, run them through a few lanes. We get into a, uh, an advanced immediate action drill. Uh, so we transition into a live fire shoot where we teach them a technique to engage un uh, unseen targets in close proximity and systematically engage likely positions of concealment and cover, searching out the enemy. Uh, we'll transition into some urban tracking where we'll teach them how to track in an urban environment. Yes, a little more difficult um, tracking through an urban environment, but it does provide what we call uh, 
traps, the track traps that will capture a print. We teach them how to search those out, use them to determine the direction, and start coordinating assets to interdict that target who's transitioning through a village or a small town. We'll also uh, we'll talk about the night tracking, show them techniques, how they can track at night if they have to, utilizing uh, you know, night vision, IR, uh, uh, light sources. Uh, we also get into a portion of uh, tracking and surveillance. And what we're trying to get them into the mindset there is that there's a bigger picture. There's the, you know, there's a tactical level tracking, which is what the team does on the ground. They, in, they find, interpret, and follow the tracks. But the bigger picture is the operational side, where where is this quarry going to? Extrapolate that line, start profiling the, 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 the track line, figure out where they're headed to. So it's quite, it's, it's, we like to think of it as a, a very well-rounded course. And we're taking them not just from the tracking side, but here's how you use it. This is what it will produce. This is how you, as an element or a unit, support the bigger picture, the operational side of it. Um, and they come out um, smiling usually at the end of it. It's uh, definitely a, a trying course. Uh, they get a 24-hour exercise uh, in the, f the final week. And they'll be out there uh, starting early in the morning, get on tracks, and anywhere from 15 to 30 clicks, depending on where uh, the terrain we're in. Um, they will follow us that distance, close with, uh, PID and then uh, destroy. So it's fun. Yeah. Now, you, you said a, a, a lot of the instructors are um, prior service or law enforcement. Um, is there any specific training that the TTOS instructor would need to have prior to actually being an instructor? Besides, obviously, you know, tracking. Yeah, there's. Um, we look at uh, obviously the tracking piece. Uh, they have some experience, gone through the course, got to go out and experiment with it and use it. You know, tracking. There's. You know, we, we don't lay claim that we own tracking. You know, it's been around since the beginning of man. All right, we've just refined some of the techniques and tactics and shaped them so they doctrinally fit with the U.S. Um, so yeah, we look for guys with the tracking capability, but we also look for guys that are good leaders that want to be mentors and pass information on. A lot of the guys are retired. They've been there, done it. They've got a lot of good information. And what we're seeing happening is a lot of this information isn't being passed on. So it gives them an opportunity to come back in and pass on things that they've picked up through their careers. You know, um, we have a couple of Special Forces guys, instructors, a former Navy SEAL, a former Ranger law enforcement, myself, I'm retired law enforcement. So we look at all the different skill sets that we've used throughout our career that may enhance the targeting of the enemy, and particularly insurgencies. Every successful insurgency is used tracking. So we look for guys that have those skill sets, they'll add something to the class. Obviously, um, you know, based off of, uh, we're not too concerned about the, the clean shaven and, and whatnot, but we want guys that want to be mentors to the Marine Corps and to the Army, and they're willing to pass on that information and make good instructors, you know. Where, where do you see the future of TTOS as far as within the next some years uh, with, with Afghanistan or, or any of the other world conflicts? Um, do you see the program getting larger, smaller, individualized? Um, that's a great question. Um, our goal is to establish tracking, reestablish combat tracking into the military. The Marine Corps have a uh, standardized program that they've adopted and are currently running, which is we're very proud to be in part of that and very uh, proud to see the Marine Corps keeping that. So we want to see it transition back into the military as a basic level skill. Um, we'll be here to support it. We're working with the military or the Army to uh, reestablish it and put it into the scouts as a standardized program. So our role in that area is we want to perpetuate tracking and make sure that every generation has it because the enemy, we've all seen it, it will be the way of the insurgent. Um, very few forces will go toe to toe with the U.S. But insurgency does work. It's a very elusive enemy, hard to target. Uh, people have caught on. The other thing we're looking at doing is we're trying to get in because of the new generation is uh, distant learning and putting what we can into distant learning materials so that young Marines and soldiers can go online and learn base skills and then as opportunity presents themselves or they uh, schedule a course, those young Marines and soldiers could attend the, the field exercise portion of it. Um, that's what we hope our role, uh, help to you know, uh, be part of the uh, effort to deal with the counterinsurgency and, and uh, insurgents uh, around the world. Now you guys are working a lot with uh, the, the engineer battalion and the sappers specifically. Um, is is there anybody else in the Marine Corps or or, or in the Army, uh, really any service member? Who do you think really needs this training? Honestly, it should be something that's taught in basic training. 
The sooner you teach a young Marine or soldier how to use their eyes and visually sense, the better off they are. From that day forward, their situational awareness will just increase. Uh, so personally, I think there should be some brief introduction, a day or two of tracking and basic patrolling, field craft, land nav. It's right in there on those levels. So everyone can use it. At one point in time in their career, they'll be able to use the tracking. And the biggest one is it just opens people's eyes. It's kind of like the McMap program, you know, to teach young Marines how to take a uh, hit, get back up and get back in the fight. You know, you start that early because we have a generation that hasn't had a lot of fighting time. You know, it's forbidden now in our society. So it gives them a chance to, hey, feel what it tastes like, to taste your own blood, but be able to get back up and get in the fight. With tracking, you're invoking this hunter mindset. You know, as soon as they're exposed to it, you change their posture into what we call the predator posture, ancient man, how he would hunt. So early on is far better. Um, specifically, as far as a career path, you know, anyone who's in reconnaissance, scout work, that type of work, special forces, uh, soft communities, you know, for targeting, engineers for detection and targeting, you know, it, any combat arms can utilize this skill uh, set. And I'd like to see it part of all of them, you know, somewhere they get exposed to it. In closing, is there anything specifically that you want uh, the audience to know about TTOS or uh, for CEB sappers or, or really just how the training has gone so far? Uh, um, as far as TTOS, hey, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. You know, like I said, we just want to pass this knowledge on so they can go out and be successful, detect those devices, accomplish their missions, and come home. Um, as far as the classes are going on, it's been great. Uh, these guys have just been a great class, um, they're very tentative, they're sponges wanting to pick up this information. Uh, they're applying it, you know, we teach them the lessons in class, they come out and apply it in the field, and just a good bunch of guys. Uh, so it's, it's, you guys got uh, the first SEB and the sappers and engineers, uh, outstanding group, you know. We're really enjoying this whole uh, six weeks that we're out here running training for them, so, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and, and final question, what does it mean to you to be able to be not only the, the, an instructor, but the president of TTOS? Um, I love being the instructor, I'll put it that way. Being the president, um, I try to run the company as a team. Um, it's a lot of like-minded guys that come together and we look at the problem set and we apply our skill sets to try to solve them. Um, there's a lot of uh, paperwork involved, obviously, with running a business and whatnot. But what makes it all worthwhile is being out here and being able to instruct and meet these young Marines and soldiers and spend time with them and pass information on. Um, that is my passion. So the business side of it, uh, I could take or leave that. Uh, but that opportunity to work with them and, and be part, you know, uh, give them exposure into what we've learned and pass it on to them, um, that's, that's the real joy and that's why I do it.